Introduction to My Discovery of England by Stephen Leacock. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. My Discovery of England by Stephen Leacock. Introduction of Mr. Stephen Leacock, given by Sir Owen Seaman on the occasion of his first lecture in London. Ladies and gentlemen, it is usual on these occasions for the chairman to begin something like this. The lecturer, I am sure, needs no introduction from me. And indeed, when I have been the lecturer, and somebody else has been the chairman, I have more than once suspected myself of being the better man of the two. Of course, I hope I should always have the good manners, I am sure Mr. Leacock has, to disguise that suspicion. However, one has to go through these formalities, and I will therefore introduce the lecturer to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Stephen Leacock. Mr. Leacock, this is the flower of London intelligence, or perhaps I should say one of the flowers. The rest are coming to your other lectures. In ordinary social life, one stops at an introduction, and does not proceed to personal details but behavior on the platform, as on the stage, is seldom ordinary. I will therefore tell you a thing or two about Mr. Leacock. In the first place, by vocation, he is a professor of political economy, and he practices humor, frenzied fiction instead of frenzied finance, by way of recreation. There he differs a good deal from me, who have to study the products of humor for my living, and by way of recreation read Mr. Leacock on political economy. Further, Mr. Leacock is all British, being English by birth and Canadian by residence. I mention this for two reasons. Because England and the Empire are very proud to claim him for their own, and secondly, because I do not wish his nationality to be confused with that of his neighbors on the other side. For English and American humorists have not always seen eye to eye. When we fail to appreciate their humor, they say we are too dull and defeat to understand it, and when they do not appreciate ours, they say we haven't got any. Now Mr. Leacock's humor is British by heredity, but he has caught something of the spirit of American humor by force of association. This puts him in a similar position to that in which I found myself once when I took the liberty of swimming across a rather large loch in Scotland. After climbing into the boat I was in the act of drying myself when I was accosted by the proprietor of the hotel adjacent to the shore. "'You have no business to be bathing here,' he shouted. "'I'm not,' I said. I'm bathing on the other side. In the same way, if any one on either side of the water is unintelligent enough to criticize Mr. Leacock's humor, he can always say it comes from the other side. But the truth is that his humor contains all that is best in the humor of both hemispheres. Having fulfilled my duty as chairman, in that I have told you nothing that you did not know before, except perhaps my swimming feet, which never got into the press because I have a very bad publicity agent, I will not detain you longer from what you are really wanting to get at, but ask Mr. Leacock to proceed at once with his lecture on frenzied fiction. End of section zero.